Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Collinwood for YouTube, back with another Dark Shadows video for you guys and girls. I'm here to give you two character retrospectives from Dark Shadows tonight. Now, I've done these characters before, so these are revisited character retrospectives. Uh, first off, one character at a time, by the way. I'm doing two different videos, so sorry for the confusion. Uh, first of off, Matthew Morgan. First, uh, played by actor George Mitchell and who later is going to be played by Thera David. Now, George Mitchell does not last too terribly long. I will say, though, George Mitchell lays the groundwork for the character of Matthew Morgan in every way. Um, when Victoria Winters, Alexander Mulkey, uh, Isil's uh, character, is down in the basement, She's at the door. She's going toward the door of the basement to seek the door where supposedly Paul Stoddard's body is buried. It's not really. Um, you know, we hear footsteps. And again, you know, Leela Swift, who was the director of that episode, is shooting the feet. Because she's building the mystery of who could it be. We know it's not a woman. This is where we're first introduced to the character of Matthew Morgan, and he's holding a fire poker in his hand. And he's grilling Victoria Winters, question-wise, but he's already prejudged her that she's after Mrs. Stoddard, that she's going to cause Mrs. Stoddard some harm. Because Matthew A. has never seen this woman on the ground. He, she doesn't know who she is. So he grabs her by the, by the wrist. And sort of has the fire poker midway. Like he's going to hit her with it. Like if he doesn't provide her with answers, he's going to club her. And I do think if it weren't for Joan Bennett's character, Elizabeth Collins Stoddard... From a fictional sense, yeah, Matthew Morgan would have killed her. He would have beat her with that fire poker to death. I would not put it past him. I think George Mitchell does not get enough credit for laying the violent groundwork that we're going to see Thayer David do. Um, now I'll get into what Thayer David does really well, too. But George Mitchell does a really good job of proving one thing and one thing for certain. Above all else, George Mitchell is loyal to to every fault in the world to Elizabeth Collins Stoddard. When I literally sit here and tell you there's nothing that character won't do, um, well, there's nothing that character won't do. He would lie for Elizabeth. He would kill for Elizabeth. And if I have to go any further than that for the groundwork George Mitchell laid... Um, yeah, there's, uh, you get what I'm saying. In every way, the character is more loyal than any dog ever would dream about being. And, in fact, bef before George Mitchell is replaced, when Roger's car accident happens, there's a lot of lines you gotta pay attention to. Victoria Winters, Alexander's character, says, if it were you in that car, I... I think George, I think, I think uh, Matthew would go down there and kill Burke Devlin. And Liz sort of ignores that, but what Victoria is saying is true. Victoria just laid the groundwork that Matthew would go down there and kill Burke Devlin if it was Elizabeth in that car. And, but when, when it gets found out about the breaks, that it was, it was, um, you know, sorry, when um when Roger has his accident and they and that before that well before they find out it's David, Elizabeth says to uh George Mitchell's character, I know you don't like my brother very much. Here's the here's the problem. Not too many terrible people like her brother very much. <laughs> um so Matthew, George Mitchell's character at the time, is getting grilled. And I love George Mitchell's response as the character Matthew Morgan. Is your brother complaining? If he's going to complain, he should make the complaints himself. And he tells he tells Elizabeth, 
I, I did not mess with your brother's break. If I did not sabotage your brother's break. She goes, well, why did you use the word sabotage? She goes, Miss Stoddard, I'm telling you the truth. I checked it. The garage checked those brakes before, and they were working just fine. So, you have a character who would do anything for Liz, right? They want to turn up the violence on Matthew Morgan for many reasons, because they want, number one, he's going to be the one who ultimately kills Bill Malloy, as he puts it accidentally, but he does push Bill Malloy's body back into the ocean. So they want multiple suspects. We know from, you know, if you're a Dark Shadows fan, you're familiar with the show, you know they're, that Matthew Morgan's going to be the guy who ultimately kills Bill Malloy. But if you're new to this channel and you've never watched DS, Dark Shadows, that the writers do a really good job of trying to pin point to multiple suspects, Rogers, Sam Evans. Burke is more of a throwaway suspect because what point would he have to kill Bill Malloy? He, Bill Malloy was trying to help him. I do think it's the writers playing a, too, a little too much bait and switch, you know, but I get why they do it. They're just trying to cast shade on someone else for a change, though it's not believable. <laughs> um... Your two more key suspects are Roger and Sam. And then, you know, you think about... When you think about Bill Malloy's really final words of he's going to do whatever it takes, even if it's going behind Liz's back, even you know, even if it causes her a, head, a bit of a headache. You know, at any point in time, you know, by this time, Thayer David is Matthew Morgan. And what we learned from that Matthew Morgan is... Uh, he ha he threatens Burke Devlin. He tells Burke Devlin, if you cause him people any trouble, I will kill you. Um, and he does this at the hotel diner. He goes, I think you mean that, Matthew. And he's like, I do. Uh, um, so, <laughs> there's that. And at the, at the uh, I think it's at the uh, Blue Whale, where Matthew, where Thayer David's Matthew Morgan does try to strangle Burke Devlin. Um, <laughs> this is they go from somewhat violent to fully violent to I don't want to is he psychotic not at first but he become he slowly becomes psychotic third I wouldn't say Thayer David's character is necessarily psycho quite yet he's not how do I put this because any slasher I compare him to could be over, stepping way over bounds. And I'm trying to think of a composed killer that sort of went crazy as they got along. Um, this is going to be a very, very weird comparison. But if you've, if you've ever seen the movie um, Wait Until Dark. Wait Until Dark is a movie that's about a, a character who is running a, a drug operate, a legal drug operation, and they hide the drugs in a bear, like in a stuffed doll or something, or stuffed bear, I forget which. I have the movie, so it's a great movie. And Audrey Hepburn in the movie plays a blind woman and she ends up with the bear somehow like somehow she ends up with it because the woman it ends up living with her some some sort of nonsense and the guy in who the one woman was sort of partnered up with or whatever you want to say or was afraid of She's afraid of him for a reason because the guy, though he's a methodical planner, he's also a bit of a psych. He can be a bit of a psychopath when he wants to be. I would say the biggest difference is with them. Matthew Morgan did not go to kill Bill Malloy. It was more in a heated, heated exchange and struggle, which does happen. 
But what really turns Matthew from really full tilt hill is pushing the body back in, not wanting the body to be found. Um, that's him covering his tracks. And when and, and really what does it fully is when Vicky says she saw the ghost of Bill Malloy, and now Matthew's worried that Bill Malloy told her who killed him. I think there David does a phenomenal job of, first of all, yes, the writers did it. The writers wrote that character. Art Wall, you know, um, Francis Swan, Art Wallace. They do a great job of turning up the character's violence. But there David is the one who performs it. And if that name sounds familiar to you, and you've watched Rocky One. Um, Thera David plays the promoter in Rocky One, um, in the first Rocky movie. Uh, but he was now. Would this be his most notable character on Dark Shadows? No, he would play way more key characters like Ben Stokes, uh, Count Andreas Potofi, obviously in 1897, and uh, Professor uh, T Professor Stokes, obviously a lot of people's favorite character that he ended up playing in Dark Shadows, the series. So, because he was really, and a lot of reason Professor Stokes is everybody's favorite character Thera David played is, he's the first real person who is almost ch is challenging Barnabas. He doesn't give in to Barnabas's demands. Um, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't know what Barnabas was at first, but he doesn't, to give an example, and I know I've given this example before for my fellow, for the audience that tunes in, for those who have never heard me say this, when he, when Thayer David plays Professor Stokes, Barnabas wants a medallion to protect from witchcraft. And if this would have been Julia, even at the time they were sort of button heads, if this would have been anybody else they would have just handed him the medallion without question right we all know this but professor stokes walks into the old house he's at least wanting some sherry you know but he he knows he's not there for an invitation he he's sort of disappointed with it <laughs> if you give that man sher sherry and cheese he's good all day <laughs> um so Barnabas asks for this witch's medallion, this medallion, right, to protect him from witchcraft. And Professor Stokes looks at him. I'll give you the medallion when you show me the witch. And it's a great line. And it's like, yes, finally, somebody is basically challenging. Not basically, he is challenging Barnabas. And like, I'm not just going to hand this over to you without you answering my questions first. And that's exactly what he's saying he does give him the, the medallion with a lot of reluctancy he doesn't get his an questions answered because barnabas you know he he talks the talk he knows how to talk to people i mean <laughs> has been alive since the 1700s let's let's just put it that way <laughs> but back to um <laughs> to matthew morgan Again, it's not a character, it's not Thayer David's most known character, but both actors, both George Mitchell and Thayer David approach this character, I won't say differently because Thayer David sort of starts that anger in a lot of ways and that suspicious hatred for people who aren't Elizabeth, for somebody who he didn't pledge his loyalty to. He pledged that loyalty to Elizabeth because Elizabeth fired every servant, every hotel uh, limo driver, every cook. Um, she hired one man, and that one man she hired from the cannery, who was sweeping the floors of the cannery, was the character of Matthew Morgan, at first played by George Mitchell, later played by Thera David. Thera David turns up the intensity of the character, because the writers are, are turning way up the intensity, intensity of the character. But make no mistake, in my opinion, the character was always intense. If you're willing to hit 
if, if you're willing to to hold up a fire poker ready to hit Victoria winners with it, you have some serious deep seated hatred issues and mistrust issues, obviously. <laughs> Uh, that's, so that's my character retrospective for Matthew Morgan, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, yeah, be careful who pledges their loyalty to you. You never know when they might go batshit crazy. <laughs> Take care.